Welcome to Coffee Break with K.A. and Dana. We're brought to you by the Lesbian Talk Show. I'm K.A., a a lesbian romance author, and in my past life, a counselor and a social worker. And I'm Dana, an avid reader, coffee connoisseur, recovering alcoholic, and a graduate of the School of Hard Knocks. Grab a cup of coffee, pull up a chair, and join us for a meaningful conversation from a lesbian perspective. battled for the right to marry, convinced that given the opportunity, our marriages would be strong. And when that decision came down, we floated on a cloud of euphoria. In this episode, K.A.'s wife Kay stands in for Dana, discussing the topic of marriage and the political climate. Join us for a meaningful conversation. All right. So this is a different kind of show because it is K.A. and Dana without the Dana. Dana took a little break this week. She's having uh, some internet issues, but she'll be back next week. And standing in for her, I am so excited, is my wife, Kay. And uh, I thought we'd just talk a little bit. So marriage. We did that. Yeah, we did, didn't we? <laughs> I, I, I go now. <laughs> it, it, it feels like it. It feels like it. Um, in a way, it, it came out of nowhere. We'd already done the, the civil union, um, and our Supreme Court was considering um, a case that would allow us to marry in the United States. And... We were watching it on TV, um, uh, and it was almost surreal in a way when the vote came down and we could marry, and I mean, like within an hour, I had us scheduled, and uh, we were, uh, we had plans to go elope, and because Illinois would come along for a little while, so um, we took a little road trip to Iowa. They were already on board. Um, so marriage. We fought hard for marriage, um, in this country, and, uh, now we've got it. So are you happy? I'm very happy. (laughs) (laughs) I wouldn't dare say I wasn't, (laughs) but I am. No, no, no. If you said your word, I'd probably edit it out. No, no, (laughs) not really. Um, I, I, I'm incredibly happy. So is it too? And, and is it different than you thought it was going to be? Well, we've been together for 25 years before we got married. So it day to day, it doesn't seem too much different. So it's just as well if we hadn't. No, no, it just doesn't feel different on a day to day basis. So it's the same. (laughs) <laughs> You're giving me a hard way to go here. I, I, I am. So so it's the same. It feels the same as it did before we got married. Is that what you said? No. Okay. But it's such a gradual change. It just didn't happen immediately. Like you said I do, and I said absolutely, and it didn't happen immediately. I thought it happened pretty In my heart, I said I do a long time ago. Well, I did, too. I did, too. That wasn't my question. I'm trying to tease okay, out. Well, it's a bit right. different. We worked really hard to get this but, thing well, called marriage. Well, from a legal standpoint, it was very different. You know, all of a sudden, we have marriage just like everybody else. We're not being discriminated again, at least that in that way. Yeah, and and it was you know you have the legal securities of marriage. There are definite benefits. Oh yeah, definitely tax benefits too. Yeah, I yeah. might add there 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 are there are definite benefits to being married, and I'm going there. But first, I'm going with the feelings. Doesn't feel any different. That's what you just said. I think I felt all those feelings for you and with you before. Okay. 
I just felt more protection from the outside. Okay, so marriage is, and and really, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm giving you a hard time here, but I feel the exact same way. <clears throat> um, marriage is more about protection, protecting yourself, protecting your relationship, protecting your assets, keeping a few more of your assets with tax write-off. Mm -hmm. Marriage. All of those things. Is that right? Yeah. It's more about protection? I don't know that it's more about but it, a protection than it is about love. Well, you didn't Because feel. you wouldn't do that unless you really love You didn't her. feel any different. You said you didn't. I think it might have made a difference if I'd only been with you for a couple of years and then we got married. It would have maybe been more drastic, but after you've been with somebody for 25 years, you feel like you're married to them. Yeah, yeah. So at a feelings level... It didn't change that, but it, it changed the fact that we are now officially legal. It was actually couple. more than 25 at that point, because we're at 33 years now. Yeah, and that was six years ago. That's a little more. But 25 is a nice round number. 27, you know. Yeah, round numbers. Those are nice. <laughs> those, those, are, those are nice. Okay, okay. So so there, there are definite, um, definite benefits to marriage. So... So we worked hard for it. Do we owe anything to other folks to like different than straight folks? Because we fought so hard for it and we were determined to have it and do we is it is it different for us? Do we owe anything to our community to make our marriage is strong and to show anybody we, that they're as good as anybody else's? We, or is it all done? Is the we fight we done? owe a lot to our community. I'm not so sure in term, uh, terms of we need to be thankful for the people who fought for us to get it. But I think what we can do is to, there are many other issues that we still have where we're working on. And I think it's up to us to continue working on those issues. So we do. So you think we do have responsibility kind of as role models? Yes. Married role models and other role models. I mean, we have a gay man running uh, for president of the United States. I mean, that's that's surreal in and of itself. I am, you know, I wish him well. Um, and we have uh, gay folk and lesbians in, in Congress. As, as a gay woman, though, the way we behave... Uh, Speaks for the way our, for everyone else too, for all other gay women. And if if we if we are a good role model, we're a good role model for them. We are a, we show the, the the straight community that we're not that much different than anyone else. In fact, we're we're good, you know, and and, and respect us for what we are. I, I think we owe from that standpoint. How long do you you think it'll take us to actually prove ourselves? Because that's what that is. That's Proving ourselves, in a way. I'm thinking less about proving ourselves to the to the straight community than I am being an example for other gay women. Okay, okay. Good role models, good married, 33 year together role models mm -hmm. to others who, and and we should be role models to young that are coming up. That's true whether you're gay or straight. And and straight people, maybe not consciously, but when they look at us, they think of that we are, our behavior and uh, the person that we are is a reflection of the gay community. And when they see us as good people, they see our community as a good Okay. Okay. All right. Hardest thing to adjust to. Um, to with after you married, the hardest thing to adjust to. In what way? You didn't have anything you to mean, adjust to. It all just came natural. Well, we lived together for twenty five years, twenty seven oh. years. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I I I felt like I belonged with you. Okay. And I I I didn't. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I didn't. Did you have? Did no. You, you have to adjust. To? No. I'm just asking. I'm just asking. I have the microphone in front of you. I can ask you whatever questions I want. <laughs> I'm just asking you. you. Put me on the spot, too, I, right? I, I, I am. I am a little bit. I am a little bit. So, 
Today's political climate. What do you think about today's political climate in terms of us? I'm scared to death in general. Okay. But maybe especially for us. Okay. Worse than you were the day that I thought Hillary was going to win, yes. That you thought, <laughs> that you thought Hillary was going to win and she didn't? <laughs> That's when it all began. That's when it all began. You know, I think a lot of people were right with you on that. A lot of our community, um, they were scared. So you're more scared today than you were then? I feel less secure. I think. But I, I'm, I worry about our country, and, I, and that's the major issue. But our status, the way we're treated within the country, if you have someone who doesn't like us that has lots of power, then it's a scarier situation for you. Yeah, and folks in other parts of the world, I can't, you know, there are folks, we have it good compared to many, and um, we're certainly doing our part to stir things up around the world with our current political climate. So, um, well, do you, you know much more about the situation outside of the United States than I do in terms of how our community is treated, what rights we have. I really have almost no knowledge about that. But I mean, we have countries where um, it's, it's uh, per perfectly fine to sentence a gay person to death for being gay. I mean, we have places in this world that think that's fun and dandy. Um, that's real fear. Yeah, we, we have places in this world that round gay people up um, and maybe don't sentence them to death, but we, we have dangerous places in this world. So from that standpoint, um, I, look at, I look at the United States and I think, well, it's worse than it was, maybe. Certainly, um, we don't feel as good as we did the day that uh, we got the right to marry in terms of being safe and accepted and we just had this rainbows and unicorns moment uh, <laughs> at that point but we've got we've got it better than some um and then i suppose there are places in the world where it's they have it better than we do in terms of acceptance of lgbt communities well if you look back 30 years 20 years, we are way better off than we were then. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I know that one conversation we have, um, I mean, your fight was the fight, in the United States, your fight was the fight for women's rights. Yes. And you're still passionate about that fight. Mm -hmm. My fight is more for gay rights. I'm much more invested in gay rights, and that's because um, we have a little age difference, and by the time uh, I became an adult, well, I, I had rights as a woman. Yeah, the woman's place was very much different in 1970 than it was in 1990, and today. Yeah. Yes. It, it's, yes. It's, 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 it's really, or it's, it's a woman's thing too, but I think the woman's thing has kind of evolved into the Me Too movement. Yes, and in a way, you have a revival of that um, women's rights movement. Which the suggests Me Too there's still movement. work to be done, both in, in women's rights and in gay rights. So we've never talked about that. Are you kind of all into that Me Too movement? Are you kind of all into it? Or? Well, I'm definitely sympathetic toward it. Well, I've, never, I've never experienced a lot of those things personally. Okay. But you are definitely, you still have passion about the women's rights movement. Mm -hmm. Get you talking about that, and it's a passionate topic. Yes. Do you feel that same passion for the Me Too movement? I think women have a long ways to go yet, too, just like gay people do. And we have to keep working on it. Seems like those in power always have to have someone under their thumb. That means that that's why they're in power. Really, I mean, but but uh, that that must be a rule with powerful people that you have to if you're if you're you know white male you gotta have um, all the females under your thumb and 
and all the the uh, females of color under your thumb and maybe the males of color under your thumb. you got to have somebody under your thumb if you're in power. Well, you think about it, other countries in the world, and currently in Germany, have a woman leader. We have never yet had a woman as president. Well, maybe uh, maybe this next round. What do you think? I think it's about time, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you were pretty sure on the last one, though. We are, I still were a lot of other people, and we're all disappointed. <laughs> but yes, wrong. <laughs> yeah, you can't, you can't predict... I mean, you can't predict what's going to happen, and you can't predict how the public's going to react and vote. And then, when when you know others interfere in your elect, election process, I mean, there's just um, it's easy to feel powerless in this situation. I think we were overconfident, and because of the overconfidence, our country got led down the wrong path. I think you're. I think you're right about that. You've been listening to Coffee Break with K.A. and Dana, meaningful conversations from a lesbian perspective. We're brought to you by the Lesbian Talk Show. Listen to us on Podbean and iTunes. Follow us on Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Until next week, be kind to one another, work hard, and watch amazing things happen in your corner of the world. 